thanks for listening to all of us. And I see that uh, if I integrate the experience, number of years that here must be exceeding more than 100 years in solar business. <laughs> Uh, some of the people I know personally, and so they know me rather too much. So I'll start with people uh, with whom I am looking forward to putting their ideas, their views. Technology. The key for companies to grow and remain in the forefront is technology. Somebody made a comment in the previous session that we are dominated by technology supplied from outside India. Why? It's not unique to us. The Americans, the only thing American is dollar printed in their treasury, rest they import. But they have a unique way of remaining on the forefront. That is IPRs, inventions, technology development. So they have focused on this area very heavily. Their institutes, their labs, etc., are actually trying to figure out where to remain on the forefront. Big corporations succeed by supporting R&D. And that's what they sell. And they want to buy technologies and products from other countries which have become a pass, which anybody can do. And that's how the technology manufacturing base is shifting to China, to other countries. But that's where they are borrowing the technology or buying the IPRs and installing themselves. So that's a point I wanted to mention from my side on technology side. Two, three things, then I invite our experts. Number one, keep in mind robotics is knocking at the door of all the technology driven business. I come from a company which is huge, 40,000 megawatt of installed capacity and maybe $18 billion revenue. But we are adopting robotics now. We want to be, if not ahead of the curve, we want to be with the curve. We have invested into startups. We have invested into mature companies who are doing this. We want to understand where it can go. We are also looking at drones. We have even acquired a uh, share in company which is doing drones. We can use it in solar plants in a big way. And that's one area. So I'm just saying that technology has limitless boundaries subject to your imagination and economic viability of application of that. So with this uh, comment, I will first invite respected uh, Mr. Shekhar Dutt, who I believe was driving the MP government for a long time. Sir, I would invite you to say a few words to us from the technology angle on the slow business. Thank you. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have uh, been dealing with uh, technology at different levels, different areas for a long time, very long time. Many years ago, when I started my career in the civil service, I used to look after all major dams and uh, both from the power and the uh, irrigation point of view and which, were, which played a huge role in the Green Revolution. The so Green Revolution was technology, which uh, from a completely deficit, food deficit country, we became food surplus and we are so much surplus that we can't keep the food that we grow. Enormous amount of food is wasted because we don't have adequate uh, warehouses. That's one side. Then uh, in the government of India, I was four times in the Ministry of Defense, which is hugely dependent on technology. And uh, in sectors, I was uh, looking after all major projects, 
electronic uh, missiles, everything. I found one thing where there is a denial. The God says that I won't give you the chabi. You have to do it yourself. We do it. We Indian do it very well. If God points out ki wahan se mil jayega, or there are some people who give us and it's an easy access, we don't do. So after the 1974 um, the atomic blast in the Pokhanan, the first Pokhanan blast, India was put in a list of uh, countries which uh, they said we can't give high technology to them, the entire West. So we had to put in with going for the Soviets. And then again, the 1999 Pokhran blast, again we were put like this. So this was called denial regime. We were denied. So you'll be surprised that if ISRO wants, wanted to have one, say, computer, our uh, DA in the Washington embassy would have to go to the Department of Commerce and take one permission for for the computer. Like that for atomic energy and for defense side. So we had to do it ourselves. And the result is that we make five stage rockets, Agni missiles, which is um, say in 28 seconds we are in stratosphere. So it is a complex bit of uh, technology and it uses all kinds of available knowledge and you develop the knowledge yourself. Then ISRO, you all know how it's doing. We are even putting satellites of very advanced Western countries, including USA, Israel, Japan, through GSLV or PSLV into the static or polar static or geostatic orbits. We have uh, the capability in our atomic energy, which was again denied. Only when the Indo-US uh, atomic, that is, uh, nuclear deal happened that some windows for technology, high technology was opened. Now in all these fields, we require semiconductors, all these missiles, uh, rockets, uh, space uh, crafts, our atomic energy installations. We require integrated circuits. And in the defense side, we have small fabrication units where we do our own digital signal, uh, signal processes, DSPs and ASICs and all this. And we do our own uh, uh, fabrication. Now if you see solar, okay, I was telling somebody this morning that uh, the DRDO started an agriculture uh, say demonstration uh, this thing in lay in the 19 late 1980s actually early 1990s and the result is that Ladakh has become self-sufficient in vegetable because we get unlimited sun and so we use the sun half the uh, say six, seven, uh, eight months, we've got extremely good sun and then it becomes cold. So we use the, we still have sun. So we use the hothouse or greenhouse. And there the DRDO has been using the trackers, gyros, which were basically for uh, missiles, for uh, tracking the sun and the entire Agriculture station of DRDO is using solar. 
you must have heard of dr kurian the the father of the uh, white revolution white revolution followed the green revolution and i was at one time chairman of the dairy federation of india we also i was in the national ncdfi at the national level and also in the board of irma institute of rural management with the uh, i am ahmedabad again in all the dairy uh, complexes since the early 80s we have been using solar energy because the entire economics of dairy is that how early you can take milk chill it then when you have substantial quantity you take it to the processing station where you heat and chill very quickly and that is called pasteurization and then you have surplus milk you uh, make milk powder at the time when you have deficit milk milk powder white butter and you reconstitute that back into milk so that's the whole economics of the dairy industry amul is today somewhere around 17 18 billion dollar company and there are many such companies in um, if you take during the length and breadth of the country what i'm saying is that in the sectors where we are enormously dependent on technology and where perhaps there has been denial we have made our own bit of technology now yesterday i met uh, we met the uh, revenue secretary and we were talking about uh, the rates of uh, of uh, taxes and how it will affect the gst and all that now we are importing we are importing bulk of our solar modules from china and uh, bulk of our uh, cost of the of the total project in the solar sector is those import uh, this thing according to uh, what was given to the parliament some time ago about 80 more than 80% used to be but now the prices have come down because china has reduced the price of of the modules and therefore maybe it is closer between 70 to 80% nevertheless it's a huge huge amount at some times a uh, lot of people were talking that uh, Uh, modules are one but finance is the other but in any case we are dependent we are on the cost of material and the material is not made by us we assemble it so what i was telling my friends everywhere and i think we ought to do that we should see how china has developed china has gone for the technology which uh, was perhaps uh, uh, initially uh, developed in germany in the 90s and they've set up their production plants based on that technology at that time the demand of solar projects were very very low now many of you must have attended uh, or followed cop 21 the climate change uh, conference in paris in uh, where our prime minister made this enormous fourth uh, you know foresight uh uh enormous say expression of will that by 2022 we will have 100 gigawatts of solar power in india and by 2030 we'll have 40% of our total energy from solar energy or not from solar energy renewable energy But if we calculate, it will be somewhere around 250 gigawatts of of solar power by 2030. At present, we are we are just over uh, a bit over 10 gigawatts. So obviously, the last two years there's a huge up thirst of uh, solar energy in this whole uh, parameter of energy generation. And next two years, it will be even more. and next perhaps 5 10 years it will be enormous my proposition is that this is the time when indian must sort of gird up and start developing the next generation 
the generation of modules that you are using are 1990s generation which was developed in germany which is uh, which is on which factories have been made in uh, in china and they are supplying here 21st century and now this second decade and by the end of second decade we have shifted the gear into completely different field if we do a little bit of forecasting we'll find that we are in in another leap leapfrog mode a transportation would be also dependent on 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 solar on on energy uh, electric energy even yesterday somebody was telling that nagpur would have the first uh, uh, this thing they would have uh, they will be cities and the modern cities and i've been saying this all these smart cities must have smart transportation and likewise food processing sir, we need enormous to, amount of food processing is possible. sir uh, we have seven speakers okay. so would you like to conclude so, now, so okay. what my my uh, uh, i want to suggest is that this is the time and we should see the possibility of engaging scientists even if they are not from india our technology institutes are there in uh, say uh, iits or engineering colleges but scientists can come from abroad partnership with the with the uh, developers and epc and whoever are in the field of solar work and we develop and make some models use them as a uh, test bench and thereafter when it is proved then start manufacturing we get an entire other benefit in india for make in india and we must make uh, that effort but make in india should not be the old technology it should be new technology which will have more efficiency more uh, more uh, cost effectiveness and greater sustenance so ladies and gentlemen my i would say that solar energy should uh, bring india into a new league thank you very much jai hind thank you sir for your thought process um, i would invite chetan shah to speak uh, give your ideas welcome thank you uh ladies and gentlemen first of all uh, i thank uh, eq for uh bringing all uh, brains here uh, uh in this uh, room and uh, whatever is said here like you know india is on a global radar these days or as far as the solar is concerned and uh, whatever is uh, shared here or like uh, uh, somebody is sharing his thought agreement disagreement that's been noted globally because uh considering the growth opportunity in solar business i think india is the only uh, place where uh coming decade would be the place where everybody will have some thing to do with uh well just giving a short uh, introduction of mine i am a chetan so i am a promoter of uh, one of the promoter of uh, golden green we are from a group uh, called srk and uh, we are 1.2 billion dollar uh, group having offices in practically all the continents across the world and uh, uh we just started uh, solar business in 2012 uh, so it's it's not a very long journey but it's five year uh, journey for us primarily we are into the module manufacturing and uh, in fact uh, now we have a uh, uh, like road map to expand our capacity to 1 gigawatt which uh, we plan to start uh, put up a 500 megawatt uh, in 2017 and another 500 megawatt in 2018 the facility is already into the planning so uh, when it comes to uh, technology the typically what we have seen is uh, the same i agree with uh, uh, sekhar ji 
uh, that what uh, technology the in, in solar space the module is the key component and what module what technology we are talking we are just talking enhance efficiency only but the technology is the same what we have seen uh, you know like uh, in last decade so uh, there is no major breakthrough which we have seen in terms of uh, uh, technology so basically uh, point is that we are uh, when we talk technology what is india's participation what is india's role into technology i think uh, i can say it is zero we are purely a importer or we are a buyer of technology and we are just you know our focus is just a solar uh, uh, power generation that is what is our focus india has never focus on the technology development of technology enhancement of technology if somebody is doing it it's basically it's a very small in numbers so you know uh, basically uh, the idea is uh, how we can focus on uh, more on technology in fact uh, you know i've been to indian institute of science and they are doing wonderful job uh, with a graphene like uh, it's another uh, uh, something what they are doing with a graphene and they are trying to develop a solar cell uh, you know uh, with the use of graphene which is something which is very very interesting i don't know whether uh, how uh, when they will be able to commercialize this but the, the those kind of uh, r&ds are happening uh, in uh, uh, solar space also in india but we actually the all the large group all the major corporates they really need to support this kind of initiative and invest in uh, uh, development of technology uh, then only india will have some position to uh, say that oh fine this is what is uh, the indian technology and uh, made by indians and made, uh, for for the global market so uh, well whatever the technology that we are uh, delivering or we are installing in our uh, indian uh, market in, in indian soil basically you know uh, are considering the price pressure constant dropping of price tariffs and uh, other prices do we think that the technology that uh, we are deploying on our soil uh, that is really going to sustain for what we planned for that is what we are talking about 25 years of life 30 years of life 35 years of life is it really going to sustain because yeah there are certain case uh, there are certain case studies like you know where the germany or maybe some sweden or some other countries they have some solar panels still generating power uh, after 30 years 35 years 40 years but is it really in a mass i mean we do have some case studies but uh, can we take uh, so much of investment uh, you know uh, pump in so much of investment with not knowing that whether it is really going to work for the, uh, so many years or what i came across some uh, people some developers or some epc companies the calculation is something which is uh, you know like it's a different this is like you know if uh, this system works for 12 15 years it's fine after 12 15 years there will be a different technology and then we can redeploy uh, the different technology uh, you know so those kind of calculations are there so it's something where everybody have their own uh, set of calculation uh, but <clears throat> if we are talking the same technology in terms of solar panel uh i think we really need to uh, think about the uh, standards the quality whether the same iec standards are okay whether this will really uh, you know enable this solar module to play its role for 25 years 30 years whether the new standards which are coming in is which the india is proposing is it really going to work uh, control the quality criteria i mean everybody knows more than 85 85% panels which we are uh, uh importing uh has uh, uh, you know some of them are there are there are good companies of, of course but the uh, i do not know there is no control uh, on the quality which we are uh, getting in and uh, nobody knows whether it is really going to work after 5 10 years uh, on or not so basically what i am suggesting is there uh, to this forum is there has to be some uh, Uh, workable quality uh, guidelines in a place we are working with those old set of standard of iec 
and then when we are just producing anything or we are just importing anything uh, under those guidelines so india really needs the strict quality guideline which is proactive not something which is a static it has there has to be some dynamism in a quality guideline because uh, like you know uh, if something goes wrong with uh, the commitment which are made by the developers or the uh, 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 other com uh, or the corporates and if something goes wrong i think it's really going to uh, give a uh, black uh, spot to the indian uh, uh, industry the kind of compromises which are being made under the cost pressure which we have seen we have already experienced those uh, 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 you know deterioration in quality in terms of not only modules but in terms of epcs also like structure and the designing of a plant so i think there are really serious concern we are talking about only talking about volume but uh, then there are no quality guideline uh, for the uh, installation of a solar plant every company has their own criteria and they are just claiming that ours is the best but there are no uh, standard benchmark which we have seen here so i think uh, you know that is also something uh, one of the uh, uh, point which we should uh, consider in the way modules are being handled at the sites we have been to so many sites uh, while they were installing the module even the tier 1 companies also like those who are in mncs and the way they were handling modules set aside and when we are talking about the performance for 25 years and the warranty and guarantee for 25 years kind of micro crack which we have observed we picked up some of the module uh, from the site and checked it so within just first week only kind of micro crack which we have observed we have compared with the micro crack which we be uh, recorded in our factory and then we compared the same, uh, same module uh, uh, with a new micro crack it is something which is horrible let me tell you ladies and gentlemen so india really need to uh, focus on this area the way we are talking about quality we, uh, we expect a quality from module manufacturer i think the more care to be taken uh, from the installation part also because the ultimately the module has to perform and uh, give a service for the 25 years and that is what uh, we expect from uh, 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 you know the model manufacturer also so these are the some of the uh, points which uh, i wish that we discuss on this forum also it's is something not uh, re uh, exactly related to the uh, what title that we are talking technology because we have very less to say in technology but at least you know uh, the w the way india is moving i think we should uh, think about that also thank you thank you very much uh i first of all let me respond to the title i think technology doesn't mean invention it also means innovation innovative use of knowledge it's we we just hammering on technology panel efficiency but there's an innovative way for example we have these single axis double axis stacker that's an innovation it's not purely technology the other thing which you actually opened a pandora's box which is very close to my heart for example asset management is one of the biggest issue especially in solar you have to run the plant for a long time so that's a one big issue you spoke about pre installation but asset management under 55001 iso is actually a long term and and that's some skill that i don't see uh, many of the companies are em employing today but Uh, that's a separate place we have to go and i have few other comments which i'll actually take later uh, but i before i go to uh, mr khatri yeah. from dupont rahul you are one of our advisors global <laughs> by the way dupont is a big boy okay so let's recognize that having him here amongst us i mean he's a towering company you advise us on safety Last time I did that, but I will be talking about something else. No, I'm now. just mentioning that's also part of solar, which I have not heard from anybody. Yeah. But I welcome, please. Thank you. Thank you.